Alrighty, so a few weeks ago, before the holidays, I was refereeing for the CBJJF at the Vancouver International Open, and I was doing the advanced Nogi division, and uh, here we have the first match. I'm explaining the rules, because I don't like to disqualify people, you know, and especially in Nogi, sometimes people don't understand what's going on. So here I'm talking about, you know, you can heel hook, because I mean, it's IBJJF advanced Nogi. Here I'm saying you can't slam, you know, you can throw a guy. Um, just making sure everybody kind of knows what's up, saying, you know, keep it on the mat, don't go off the mat, you know, there's points involved, blah, 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 because I don't want to DQ anybody, right? It's up to people to know the rules, but I don't want to, you know, so I sometimes give them a quick breakdown, especially, like I said, in no-gi, people are from mixed martial arts, or they're from, they're, they're used to wrestling under ADC, ADCC rules, or NAGA, or FILA, or God knows what else. Anyway, the one fellow there with the uh, red anklet. He's uh, looking for a takedown. In order to get points, he has to hold his opponent down for three seconds on his back or on his knees and get behind his arms. And I'm watching now to see what he accomplishes. Um, when someone's trying a takedown, you should wait until the end to decide if they achieved it or if they almost achieved it. You know, If it's an almost, it gets an advantage. And if they did achieve the takedown, it gets two points, obviously, but uh, you should never award... Here, I'm going to give an advantage. There it is. You should never award both an advantage and the points because you either accomplish your takedown or you almost accomplish it. You can't do both. You know what I mean? You can't almost do something and do something, right? So, there he almost got him for a takedown, so I gave him an advantage. And again, like I said, to get a takedown, it has to be um, his butt on the mat, um, for three seconds, or his knees on the mat with you behind the plane of his arms, you know. If he's turtled, you have to be behind him. And, uh, anyway, they're looking for further takedowns here, and, uh, pummeling and whatnot. Nobody looks like they want to pull guard, which is fine. Sometimes you get people in, uh, no gi or in jiu-jitsu that want to pull guard, and I think this is middleweight, maybe? I don't know. So they're, they're, of, a, they're of a size where they could pull guard or go for takedowns and have some success. You know, generally the smaller the people are, the more likely they are to have success with uh, pulling guard, and the bigger they are, the less likely they are to have success pulling guard, because, you know, of the uh, leg strength to body weight discrepancy, you know? And people who are like middleweight or whatever can generally do both, but these guys look like they're looking for the takedown, which is fine, you know, as long as they're not, oh, there's another one shooting in. Whoa, that's a big, he picks them up guy's on his back, but he's going to get back up again. And like I said, to get uh, to get points, you have to hold him on the mat, on his back for three seconds, or they're given an advantage. Or you have to have him, his knee, both his knees on the mat, and you behind the plane of his arms, right? And it was none of that, so he gets another advantage. The fellow in the uh, red anklet there. I think he's from a Marcosaurus club, and the other fellow I think is from Vancouver Island Jiu-Jitsu, I think. Anyway, He's getting up again. Another advantage. I think that's three now for the uh, fellow with the red anklet on there because he keeps shooting in and taking the guy down, but then the guy's able to get back up again before three seconds have passed and whatnot. So here they are standing again. And I am continuing to carefully observe. Both of them seem to have pretty good takedown skills, both offensively and defensively. And... Uh, Make it for a pretty scrappy match. Oh, look at that, that's a nice Uchimata. But, uh. He's following it up with a single leg, and the guy gets away. Oh, he's almost away yet. See, I'm still watching. This could still end up being two. Not anymore, though. Very likely I award this an advantage. Yep, there it is. That's an advantage for the other fellow now because he almost took him down. You know, started with an Uchimata, turned it into a single leg, the guy escaped. They're standing again, so I think it's three advantages for the fellow in the red anklet, and uh, one advantage for the other guy. That was a... Ooh. Yeah. See, I think watching that, I wasn't sure if that qualified as a takedown, because the dude went behind him, and then the guy kind of tumbled, but there didn't seem to be like a takedown attempt. So, that one is in the gray area. Probably I should award that two points, but um, I have not awarded it anything yet. As I, like I said, the fellow with the red anklet went behind him, and then the fellow not in the red anklet, the fellow in the long pants there, 
did kind of a tumble. Maybe he was looking for a knee bar, I don't know. Probably I could award that two points, but... Mm, yeah, then he's up again. I think I'm going to give that an advantage. Do I give it an advantage? I'm thinking about it. Yeah, there it is. Sometimes you see something happen, you're not exactly sure what the hell you just saw, you know? So anyway, I could have given that two points, but I didn't. I chose to give it an advantage because I wasn't sure if uh, that qualified as a takedown or not. And the guy got back to his feet. You know, having watched that again, I probably should have given that two points for the takedown, but I didn't. And uh, such is life, you know? The guy from Vancouver Island or whatever shot in. The other fellow sprawled. He's on his back now. So... Countering a takedown is not a takedown. If I shoot on you and you sprawl and then I pull half guard, not a takedown. You know? What do, do I give that anything? Nope, doesn't look like I do. They're standing again, looking for takedowns. I forget what the score is here. The fellow in the longer pants there attempts a takedown. There's another attempt to takedown. Now he's on his back. And this is now a back take, you know? So that, I give him the two there, because the fellow, as you can see, his knees are on the mat. Maybe that could have been an advantage. You know, with these Nogi matches, it's so scrappy, sort of spazzy or whatever, you know? But uh, the dude in the longer pants got behind him, picked him up, put him down on the mat. The guy's knees remain on the mat. He was behind the plane of his arms. So my awarding that two points, that's, you know, not insane. I don't know if I would do that again, but it's not crazy, you know? And now the fellow's in the bottom looking for a knee bar, maybe? And the fellow on top in the red anklet there is trying to avoid getting his uh, leg caught and what have you. And now this is going to qualify as a sweep because he went from from bottom to top. And, the, uh, and then I gave him an advantage there, I think, for that knee bar attempt. And contrarily, the guy with the red anklet, he was on top for a moment there, and now he's on the bottom, and uh, that qualifies as a sweep, you know? And now he's looking for a guillotine. And I'm not exactly sure what the score is right now. I think the fellow in the longer pants is up by a couple points. Because I awarded the two points for that uh, takedown, I awarded the advantage for the knee bar. And bear in mind, if, if, if one person has quite a few advantages, that doesn't, you know, it's, it's better to have two points than a hundred million advantages. You know what I mean? It's better to have done something than to have almost done something. You see what I mean? So I'm pretty sure right now the guy on top with the longer pants has two points, but then the guy in the, an the uh, red anklet there, I think he has a few advantages. And, uh, like I said, points beat advantages. So, if you're a coach or a competitor or whatever, bear that in mind, and don't yell at the referee if he awards the win to the guy who has two points over the fellow that has, you know, 19 advantages. That's just the way of the world. Anyway, I'm continuing to carefully watch what's going on here. The fellow in the longer pants has uh, gotten on top. He's in the fellow's half guard. He's passing half guard. And, uh, I can't tell if he's passed it or not. my fine camera work you know I just have my my flip camera over on the side of the mat and sometimes it's not the finest angle but you know whatever this way I can at least review what I did and uh, viciously criticize my own referee and, you know for my own uh, see there that's the pass there I'm given the three you know so there's no question now that the guy on top is ahead and uh, the guy in the red anklet there is now down Five, there's the mount. I'm going to give that the four. There's the four. So now that's... I think he's got... I think the fellow on top now has nine points, and the guy on the bottom has a couple advantages. But the guy on top has a few advantages as well, so... So anyway, it's pretty clear who's winning now, and, uh... I think the match is winding to a halt. I don't recall how long these were, but... Generally, when somebody's up 9 nothing, it takes, I don't want to say a miracle for the other person to uh, pull out of the nosedive, but it's pretty hard, you know? 
Imagine if you're playing football and for every touchdown you score, the whole field sort of slopes. That's what it's like, you know, because when you're scoring points, it means that you have attained a position from which the other person will have difficulty scoring points. You know what I mean? If I'm mounted on you, I have a whole bunch of points, and what the hell can you do from the bottom? Even if you escape mount, that's not worth anything. It's not a sweep, it's just a positional escape. You know what I mean? So, the guy in the bottom, if he wants to, you know, score some points, he should get back to half guard or guard, or probably half guard, and then score a sweep, but if he bridges and rolls from there into the guy's closed guard, that's not worth anything, because that's not a sweep. It's just a positional escape. You know what I mean? So if you're bridging and powering out of mount or side control or north-south or whatever, it's like that, that's not worth anything. See, and there's the end of the match, you know? So, a fine job done by everybody, and um, I'm going to raise somebody's arm and move on to the next match. You know, and I don't think there's any debate as to... Uh, who won that? The one guy who's apparently very tired. <laughs> you know, all bent over and stuff. And bear in mind, for this division, they had everybody fight everybody. It wasn't just single elimination. They had some kind of wacky round-robin thing going on. But I only refereed the first four of the matches. Although I think there was... I think there was six matches for whatever reason. Anyway, here we are uh, for match number two in the advanced Nogi division. And this is... Um, Morgan Littlechild, I've refereed him a few times. The other guy, I think, I forget his name, but I think he trains with my old friend Dennis Kang. So, uh, again, I'm explaining to them here the rules. You know, I'm saying heel hooks are cool, neck crank's not cool, you know, keep it on the mat. Uh, you know, that's why I'm explaining what slamming is, no slamming, you know. And for those of you who don't know what slamming is, slamming is when someone's on the mat and you pick them up and smash them against the earth. You know what I mean? It's not a throw, it's not a sweep, it's a slam. Or you use there you go, Morgan. He sits, trying to use a, a guard, or a half guard in this case, and the other guy's starting to deal with that. Um, he's passed the guy's guard, so I've awarded him the points, the three points for passing guard. And uh, Now he's moved to kind of a north-south position, which is not a good position to be in for the guy on the bottom, because the further away from... When you're caught in north-south, it's very difficult to get back to your guard, you know. And it's also very difficult to get to your knees if the guy's doing north-south properly, you know what I mean? So even though north-south is only worth the same amount as side control, which is effectively nothing, actually. You pass the guard, that's three. But uh, north-south is a very good position. Better than side control, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, the fellow on top has... Uh, Scored three for passing guard, now he's mounted. I'm gonna give him, there's the four. And, uh, you know, now he's doing the, uh, I call it the itsy bitsy spider when they walk the hand up the mat, you know? So he's doing that, and he's looking for probably a head and arm choke, because that's what is, that's what people do generally from mount, when they do what I call the itsy bitsy spider, and they walk their fingers along the mat, you know? Usually they try and get their ear against the tricep, and then uh, do the head and arm choke, you know? But, like I said, he's, uh, he's gotten his three for passing, he's gotten his four for the mount, and again, the fellow in the bottom is in a position where he's not just down on points, but he's in a position where, for him, he can't score points. If you bridge and roll out of the mount, that's not worth anything. You know what I mean? So, it is, uh... And not just that, too, also the person on the bottom, I mean, from here, what submission opportunities do they have? Maybe they can try and bounce the guy and try and get for a leg lock or something, but uh, the guy on top has way more. Oh, now he's looking for a back. There you go. That's going to be four if he gets his feet in the correct. There it is. There's the four. You know? So now the guy on top is up, what, like nine nothing, you know? So this is not, you know. He's gone back to the mount. I've given him another four. And you can alternate between back and mount. As crazy that sounds, you know? If you are mounted on a person, they turn their back, you take their back, that's four. If they turn again and you mount them again, that's another four. Even though, you know, it uh, doesn't seem fair, it is, that's just how it is. This might be another, oh, they just given him, almost given him his back again. Anyway, my point is that if you're alternating between being mounted on a person, I'll give this person in the blue gi. Get out of the way, you guy with the blue gi. Anyway, he's taking his back, and, uh, anyway. As a competitor, keep that in mind. 
If a person's mounted on you, then hands your back, then is mounted on you, then hands your back, it's four each time, you know? It's also a four, as insane as this sounds, for doing what's called the back mount, which is where you're flat in your tummy and the person's, you know, mounted on you while your tummy down. That is the back mount. So if you go mount, back mount, back take, that's 12 points. As crazy as that sounds, that's the case, you know? Oh, here I'm giving him another four for the back again, you know? And there's somebody with a real camera who's right in front of me, you know? Um... Anyway, again, this is the kind of situation where the person who's way down on points, in order for them to win, they basically have to submit their opponent. But they're not in a position where any submissions are available, you know? Contrarily, the person with, you know, here he has the body triangle, he, there's no pressure on him to submit his opponent whatsoever, you know, but from here he has, you know, more submission opportunities, whether it's chokes or arm locks or what have you. I mean, there's even a few leg locks when you're on the person's back. You can knock them to the side and do the banana splits or a calf crush or some other stuff, you know, not that those are high percentage, but they're there, you know? So it's odd that uh, sometimes coaches will yell, you know, you're way down on points, you got to submit him. And the person they're yelling at, oh, there, I think he choked him. And the person they're yelling at doesn't have the opportunity to submit him. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the fellow at the... Uh, let's change inside. I'm pretty sure he caught him in a rear naked there, you know? Yeah, winner by submission. He caught him in a choke. Anyway, shaking hands, off they go. Good match, you know? Everybody did their best, and here we are, you know? So that was match two of uh, the Nogi Advance Division. And now we have the winner of the last match versus the fellow that lost the first match. And I was perplexed by this, but they're doing a round robin where everybody fights everybody. And um, so be it, you know? And uh, I believe both these guys primarily have trained with mixed martial arts in mind. Oh, no, maybe not. I mean, MMA guys wouldn't be pulling guard, you know? Look at that. That was nice. That's going to get some points. There it is. That's definitely a sweep. Because he pulled and he went from bottom to top. That's a nice two points. Now he's passing. Maybe I'll give him three for that. There's three. I'm going to give him two for this knee on belly. Yeah, there's the two. So he's gotten, uh, what is it now? Two for the sweep. Three for the pass. That's seven. Three for the sweep. Two for the pass. I mean, sorry. Three for the sweep. What am I talking about? Two for the sweep. Three for the pass. And two for knee on belly. That's seven. You know? Trust me, I know my stuff. Anyway, and now the fellow on top is uh, semi-mounted. Did I give him points for that? He was kind of in the guy's guard, but not really, you know? His foot was kind of tied up there. Again, he's mounted, and he's looking for... He's got a head. I think he's probably looking for the itsy-bitsy spider there again to walk his hands along the mat. The guy in the bottom is grabbing onto his body, which is something you see mixed martial artists do because they don't want to get punched in the face, but in... Uh, in a jiu-jitsu tournament, it's not the greatest idea because you're kind of giving up on plata. All the guy has to do is... Yeah, I gave him... I think I'm giving him... Yeah, and I gave him three there for passing and four for mounting because he had, he briefly had his foot caught. So, if you're on the bottom and you're going to re-guard, you want to get a good guard because if you just get a half-ass guard that the guy can pass again, he's going to get another three and another four. You know what I mean? So when you're on the bottom like that and you're re-guarding, make sure you get a good guard. And if you can't get a good guard, don't even try to re-guard. Because if you just sort of pinch his foot and then he passes again, that's another three and another four. You just gave him, you know, seven points by my math. You know what I mean? That happens a lot. You know, people on the bottom are so desperate to escape mount that they get, you know, a one-eighth guard or whatever. They've just, they get their thighs around the guy's foot. And then he escapes from it. And he gets another seven, you know. And he's still clamped around the guy's body, which is, uh, you know... A good way to not get punched in the face. In MMA, great, you know, if you want to be, you know, Frank Shamrock and don't get punched in the face, uh, you can do that. But in mixed mar I mean, in, uh, in jiu-jitsu, when you do that, all the guy in the top has to do is step up with one leg like that. And uh, it starts giving him opportunities. You can see there the guy almost got caught in, some, in something there, you know what I mean? Anyway, I stopped the match. I'm moving him back towards the middle. And I'm going to tell them to, uh, you know, see, I can tell the guy, okay, you know, you got him in the body lock there, off you go. And you can see the guy on top is stepping up, looking for a Plata. The guy on the bottom, though, he is explosive. You know, he's, uh, he's got that body lock thing, which isn't the greatest idea. But his, uh, 
he's an explosive dude, so the guy on top is having trouble stepping up and working into a plata, you know? Or whatever. I mean, there's a variety of things that can happen there. Gogo Plata, and Tarico Plata, and Marcelo Plata, or whatever you want to call it, you know, there's all those different versions, but if you're hugging around a guy's body like that, that's primarily a defense to getting punched in the face. Uh, it's not, but it does set you up with getting caught in uh, the Plata. All the guy has to do is step up, and there it is. I think I'm showing, I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel, there is video of me demonstrating that from years ago at somebody else's club. Oh, look, the guy rolls, looks for a triangle here. That's good. There you go. So he's on the bottom again. The guy on the bottom is way up on points. The guy on top looking for a guillotine. That's two, because he went from he went from top to bottom, you know? This is not submission only. There's points involved, you know? And uh, generally in events where points are involved, primarily the matches are won because of points, you know? It's uh, very silly to allow points to be scored on you with... Uh, submission attempts generally because uh, like I said in events where points are being scored generally fights are won or lost as a result of points so for him to dive for a guillotine and then wind up on the bottom and concede the two points is strategically not not the best idea but I mean you know hey he's already way down on points he's got to do something and uh, going for a submission hold you know maybe would have been a good strategy had the guy had he caught him you know but um you get these people that sometimes, especially in nogi division, there they are used to training in a situation where it's a submission-only grappling thing or a mixed martial arts thing, you know. But even in MMA, you wouldn't want to dive for a guy's head and wind up on the bottom because you're getting walloped in the face. And that's what points are supposed to reflect. That's why mount is worth four points because from there, you're going to be taking at least four good shots in the face. You know what I mean? Neon belly is worth two because you can whack a dude, but you're not as stable. You know, passing guard is three, because, you know, if a, if a guy passes your guard, you're going to be taking some shots. So, people sometimes say that points aren't realistic, but that's silly. Points are reflective of the damage you would take from that position. You see what I mean? You know, and that way you can practice doing this to each other, but actually punching each other. You know what I mean? So, points aren't just this arbitrary, meaningless number that, you know comes from space or whatever, they're supposed to be reflective of how many shots in the dome you've taken as a result of the position you uh, find yourself in, you know? And that's why, by the, that's why, by the way, side control is not worth any points, because from there, you're holding the guy, but if you rear up to hit him, he can get away, you know? Anyway, the guy in the bottom is still latched onto him, has a closed guard, the guy on top is trying to make space, and, uh, you know, try to pass the guard, maybe. Which is very hard to do in a no-gi situation because there's nothing really to hold on to. Especially if someone has really strong legs. If they have you in a uh, closed guard no-gi, that can be very hard to open and very hard to pass. Because they're all slippery, there's nothing to grab on to, they're all... You know, it's like a giant fish in a boat, you know? Weaseling all over the place. I just compared them to a fish and a weasel, just in the last couple seconds. Um, anyway, the guy on top here is uh, way up on points. The guy in the bottom is... Probably looking for a uh, Kimura here, you know, a shoulder lock, but nope, I'm not going to get that. Off the mat they go. They come back onto the mat. They start standing again of their own volition, which is nice to see. Generally, if somebody goes off the mat in a sort of a scramble, I'll start them standing again, which is what you're supposed to do. You can't just be like, hey, get back in that weird scramble you were in, you know? Oh, that guy pulls guard. You know, you don't often see people that train mixed martial arts pulling guard. But who, what do I know? Maybe this guy is a, uh, more of a jiu-jitsu dude. I don't know. But anyway, he's pulled guard. And the guy on top is, uh, not looking for a leg lock. He's looking to pass, you know. In a no-gi situation, one of the main differences between gi and no-gi is the, uh, leg lock ability, you know, of a person who has pulled guard or is in their guard, you know. In a no-gi situation, it is way easier to leg lock a guy than it is in a uh, gi situation. And here the guy is rolling, he's looking for some kind of uh, arm lock on the fellow, which was pretty, pretty slick, I gotta say, to see. And, uh, oh, now the guy on top is probably gonna get out. Still looking for it. 
The guy on the bottom is still there, you know. Still on the bottom, you know, that's what I mean by he's still there. He hasn't come from bottom to top. Did I give him an advantage for that arm lock attempt? I don't think I did, because the guy's arm was never fully extended, you know. In order to give someone an advantage for a submission attempt, it has to be a true uh-oh situation, as I sometimes say, you know. And The guy on the top, you know, was that an uh-oh situation? Maybe, but I don't think I gave him an advantage for that. And I'm still carefully watching to see what uh, what will occur here. The fellow on top, I think, is up quite a bit on points. I think when last we checked in, he was, was he up seven? I think maybe even more than that, because he mounted in there. Maybe he's in the 12, 13 area now. Anyway, the fellow on the bottom is way up on points, and maybe he's looking over at the, uh, you know, the score clock. And bear in mind, if you compete, you should do that. You know, that's one of the mistakes I made back in the day, is I wouldn't look over, I wouldn't see how much time was left, I wouldn't look at how much what the score was. You know what I mean? That's just crazy. If you're playing a game of hockey, you want to look at the score and you want to look at the time that's left, you know? Same thing with jujitsu. If there is a time, if there's scores, you want to watch that. Yeah. You know? Although come to think of it, actually back in the day when I was competing, a lot of the time they didn't even have the time and the score up. You know what I mean? So there was nothing even to look at. You just went out there and did what you did. Yeah, I think that guy did the same thing where he jumped for a guillotine there and he ends up on the bottom. And here I've awarded him the two and the three for passing guard, you know. I think I gave the other fellow an advantage for his guillotine attempt because it was pretty close, I think, that time. Maybe? Or something like that? Anyway. The fellow has passed his guard, he's in side control, and, uh, you know... Here he's going to mount again. I'm giving him the two for Neon Belly. And the match is over. I think I'm correcting something that uh, either I or the scorekeeper got wrong, but you know. I just want this score to be right before I raise whomever's arm, you know? But once again, it's pretty clear who has won and who has not won, you know? This fellow here, congratulations everybody. And again, everybody doing their best, you know? So, I think that was match three of the four that I did. And uh, like I said, they were doing a round robin, so uh, they were having everybody fight everybody. And I didn't get to do the whole division, but I did the first four matches, and now we have the guy, the winner of the first match, versus this fellow, and I forget how he did. Anyway, off we go. Um, you can see the, the guy in the longer pants, or spats, as they're called. He doesn't seem like much of a guard player, but he's got pretty good throws. There's a nice hip toss. I gave him two for that, you know. They landed still, it looks like they landed kind of in the safety area. There's four, so I guess he's mounted on him now. You can't see what's going on, but I've given the two and four, so... Four is for he's either mounted or on the guy's back, you know? Pretty sure it's mounted, you know? Moving back to the center of the mat, so now the guy on top is up two for the takedown and four for the mount. And bear in mind, if you throw a guy and immediately mount him, you get the two for the takedown, the four for the mount, and you don't get points for passing guard if you haven't passed their guard, you know what I mean? The guy in the bottom is looking for a footlock here. He's bridged his way up and uh, he's trying to escape. But uh, sometimes that's not so easy. I am keeping a careful eye on what is occurring. The fellow in the bottom is trying to get him to sit forward so he can bridge him up and attack the leg. Trying to get back to some kind of guard. And I am keeping a careful eye on what is occurring to make sure nothing goes amiss or astray, etc., etc. The fellow in the bottom has achieved, he's gotten a leg back between him and his opponent, so he's got some kind of guard going on. So now if the guy were on top were to pass that back to mount, that'd be another three and another four. You know, but that of course is very subjective. You know what I mean? Some referees 
at what point do you say the person has achieved a guard again? You know what I mean? At what point have they are they still working on it? You know what I mean? Anyway, I am carefully observing, and uh, the guy in the bottom looks like he's going for some kind of leg lock. The guy on top is now definitely not mounted. You know? The guy in the bottom is. I don't know what he's looking for. Toe hold, maybe? No, nope, he's definitely looking for a heel hook. Which is, as I said, it's allowed in. Uh, and reaping as well. Oh, it's a knee bar, I think. Oh, there it is. And that is totally allowed in IBJJF Advanced No Gi. You know? And that's the only division where it's allowed. And by that I mean, like, you know, reaping heel hooks. Although knee bars are also allowed wearing a gi, but there you go. Anyway, congratulations to everybody. Everyone's doing a good job. Looking, you know, there I am, looking cool. And, uh, and that's that.